1998 off Canada's east coast. A modern passenger jet run by one of the world's best airlines catches fire at 33,000 feet. In its final six minutes, communications from the cockpit cease. It's burning already! Then the plane plummets into the ocean. Two hundred and twenty-nine people are dead. What caused the fire is a mystery. Many of the vessels uh, reported to the Canadian Navy vessel standing by on scene that they were finding bodies and making repeated requests uh, for more body bags to get the bodies that were now, on their boat. after one of the largest investigations in aviation history, the complete story behind the loss of Swiss Air Flight 111 can finally be told. It's a wake-up call for the entire airline industry to ensure that what happened aboard Swiss Air 111 would never happen again. This accident investigation was a unique opportunity to assess the materials in airplanes. The problem is not only just the stuff that can burn, but the fact you can't see it. When you really have fire on board, the clock is running against you. September the 2nd, 1998, Swiss Air Flight 111 prepared to depart New York's JFK International Airport en route to Geneva, Switzerland. The aircraft was a McDonnell Douglas 11, or MD-11, a model first developed in 1986 as a highly automated, modern replacement for the antiquated DC-10. It was considered one of the most reliable passenger jets in the skies, and Swiss Air pilots were among the world's best trained. Okay, after start checklist. Um, engine anti-ice, not required. Roger, not required. Auto brakes, take off. Swiss Air 111's pilots Roger, were Captain Ernst Zimmerman two, and First nine, Officer five. Stefan Love. Swiss Air 111, hold short, 3-1 left. Zimmerman encouraged an easy-going like atmosphere in the cockpit, the but he was also known for his <laughs> yeah, by-the-book precision. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When not flying, he was an instructor of new pilots for Switzerland's national Before airline. Before takeoff checklist. Uh, flaps and slats. Flaps set, 15 degrees. Set of 15. On board were 215 passengers, 12 crew, and two pilots. Most were French, American, or Swiss. 23-year-old Stephanie Shaw was on her way home to her parents in Geneva. Stephanie uh, was blessed in many ways. She was uh, physically very attractive. She was an intelligent girl. She, uh, the reason she went to New York was that she had been invited to become a member of the World Economic Forum, which is based in Geneva. And she wanted to have this trip uh, before she joined. She was a darling, she, an absolute darling. 8.18 p.m. Swiss Air 111 Hemi, clear for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff, Roger, Swiss Air 111. For safety, the Swiss Air pilots push the throttles forward together, ensuring no D1. single pilot can botch a takeoff. VR, V2. Swiss Air Flight 111 lifted off and made her way northeast toward the open Atlantic. For the first 15 minutes after takeoff, there was no communication from Swiss Air 111. It was an unusual, small detail that would later baffle investigators. Well, it does happen occasionally. They had not yet reached what we call the North Atlantic track system, where then you're not really usually in radio contact. So 
I thought it was a little abnormal, but it appears it was just nothing more than a mistake in radio frequency when the guy dialed it in and swapped over the radio. He had put in the incorrect frequency and evidently uh, just, you know, they didn't make another attempt at contacting someone. It was strange. And uh, I agree with you. It was kind of, it's kind of like, whoa, that's, that's interesting. Atlantic air traffic is handled by a remote center in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Almost half an hour after takeoff, Captain Zimmerman made his first communication with Moncton. Moncton Center, Swiss Air 111 Heavy, good uh, evening, level 330. Swiss Air 111 Heavy, Moncton Center, good evening. Reports of uh, occasional light turbulence at all levels. Moncton, Swiss Air. It was a perfectly normal transatlantic crossing. In first class, Swiss Air passengers were among the first in the world to have a personalized in-flight entertainment network. Though now common, the system was an innovation in 1998. Passengers could choose their own movie, browse the internet, and gamble. They uh, evaluated the market and they thought that introducing a modern in-flight entertainment system combined with a gambling system so that passenger actually can use their credit card and gamble during long-range flights um, would make them more attractive. This luxury would be the source of controversy to come. Yeah, what is that? Go have a look, I'll take the controls. Roger, you have control. First Officer Love investigated the area near the air condition event. Harmless smoke traces from air conditioning systems are common on commercial jets. see anything, Ert. And there's nothing up there now. You yelled for me, Captain? Stefan and I were sure we smelled smoke a few seconds ago. Can you smell anything? I smell it too, yeah. Could you smell in the cabin before you came in? No, definitely not. They agreed that the air conditioner was the likely culprit. Can't see it or smell it anymore. Air conditioning, is it? Yeah. Please close it, thanks. Behind the sealed panel, the pilots could not see that the problem was getting worse. Less than 45 seconds after smoke disappeared in the cockpit of Swiss Air 111, it returned. Zimmerman followed Swiss Air procedure. Again. He made plans to divert to the nearest yeah, place to land. This out. Find the closest place to land, Stefan. We'll need the nav charts from the library and also weather data for the area. Austin's close. It's not doing well at all up there. Zimmerman radioed air traffic control in Moncton, New Brunswick. Moncton Center, Swiss Air 111 Heavy, good evening. Unit at 920 Heavy, Moncton Center, good evening. The controller dealt with another Occasional aircraft light before responding to left. Swiss Air. Other aircraft calling, say again. Swiss Air 111 Heavy is declaring pan, pan, pan. We have smoke in the cockpit. Uh, request um, uh, immediate return to a convenient place, I guess. Boston. 
Pan 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 is an international Supervisor, term used to notify air traffic control of an urgent situation. Uh, One step one below declaring right. Mayday. You said to Boston you want to go? Uh, I guess Boston. Uh, we need for some weather there. Uh, we are starting right turn here. Swiss Air 111 heavy. Swiss Air 111 Roger and ascent to flight level 310. 310. 310. Swiss Air 111 heavy. This is the first interview with one of the air traffic controllers in Moncton. My name is Bill Pickerel, and on September 1998, September 2nd, 1998, I was one of two Halifax terminal controllers uh, working the evening shift. The pan uh, in any kind of a special uh, condition is usually dealt with uh, as an emergency, and this in fact was dealt with that way. The aircraft was immediately given priority and the uh, high-level supervisor initiated a call to the Rescue Coordination Center. Pickerel's colleague determined that Swiss Air 111 was just 66 nautical miles from Halifax and 300 from Boston. But Captain Zimmerman had chosen an airport he knew. A lot of times when you're having a problem, you would rather be dealing with an issue where you're much more familiar with the airport because that relieves a little stress on you. This is initial problem. He's sitting there, he's looking up there, he's trying to think, well, I've got smoke here. Now, what does it mean? Let's see, where, where are we? where's the closest place I can go to that I can talk to a Swiss air mechanic? Boston. Swiss Air 111 Center. Swiss Air 111 Heavy, go ahead. Would you prefer to go into Halifax? Or is we better put the mask on? Uh, stand by. Realizing their location, Zimmerman decided Halifax was now the best option. Affirmative, Swiss Air 111 Heavy. We prefer Halifax from our position. Swiss Air 111 Roger, proceed direct to Halifax to send now to flight level 290. Level 290 to Halifax, Swiss Air 111 Heavy. A British Airways pilot in the area offered the crew what little help he could. Swiss Air 111 Heavy from Speedbird 214. I can give you the Halifax weather if you like. Swiss Air 111 Heavy, yeah. Uh... We have the uh, oxygen masks on. Uh, go ahead with the weather. It's the 300 Zulu weather. Swiss Air 111 commenced its descent to below 30,000 feet. The pilots calm and in control. It would take about 20 minutes to reach Halifax. Roger, Swiss Air 111 Heavy, we copy 2980. Swiss Air 111, you're cleared to 10,000 feet. And the Halifax altimeter is 2980. Swiss Air 111 Heavy, 2980 at 10,000 feet. And Swiss Air 111, can you tell me what your fuel on board is? Uh, stand by for this. Speedbird 1506 is a Tusky listing out. Speedbird 1506, roger. The Swiss Air 111, you can contact Mountain Center aircraft. now, 119 This jurisdiction was high altitude flights. As Swiss Air was on descent to Halifax, he hands over responsibility to Bill Pickett. At that point, uh, everything was normal. Uh, I, I gave the pilot an initial descent, and uh, he requested to level off at an intermediate altitude to get the cabin in order for the landing, which I took to mean that they needed to pack away dinner trays and uh, things like that. It was an indication to me that uh, uh, while his situation was unusual, uh, that uh, they weren't considering it as uh, an emergency at that time. Watch your speed, Stefan. Don't descend too fast. Roger. Yes, Captain. Now we have smoke in the cockpit here. Have the uh, cabin crew prepare for landing. We'll be setting down in Halifax in about 20 minutes. I'm about to start the checklist here. Yes, Captain Zero. Zimmerman had two checklists for smoke in the cockpit. To complete both would take 20 minutes. This was Swiss Air Company policy. In the meantime, Love continued the descent into Halifax. Stefan, I'll need you 
to handle the radio while I do this checklist. All right. One one nine or point two for the Swiss Air one 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 heavy. Roger. Swiss Air 111 was now at about 25,000 feet. Pickerel advises them to descend to 3,000. But First Officer Love said he'd rather fly at 8,000 until the passenger cabin was cleared. Swiss Air 111, Their attitude underscored the sense of control in the cockpit. From my point of view, it uh, gave all initial appearances that it should be a fairly straightforward operation, that uh, assuming that uh, everything happened normally, the aircraft uh, would require a minimum of handling to uh, uh, lead them into Halifax. Swiss Air 111, you can descend to three, level off at an intermediate altitude if you wish, just advise. That Pickerel was concerned the plane was not coming down fast enough. It appeared that the aircraft uh, might have been a little bit high, and uh, I wanted to ensure that the pilots were aware of how uh, far they were from the airport, how many miles they had to fly, so that they could uh, judge their own descent and make their decision about what they wanted to do. Roger, at the time we descend to 8,000 feet, and we are clear at any time to 3,000 feet. I give you advice. Okay, can I vector you uh, to set up for runway 06 at Halifax? Uh, Roger, vector for six will be fine. Swiss Air 111 heading. Swiss Air 111, Roger, turn left heading of uh, 030. Left heading 030 for the Swiss Air 111 heading. Captain Zimmerman needed information for the unfamiliar airfield but his flight bag was out of reach. He summoned the flight attendant to help. You held me, Captain. For two minutes now. I need that flight bag there. It's got the approach charts for Halifax. <clears throat> Take it back to your crew. Yes, Captain. Speaking. The chief flight attendant notified passengers that the flight was being diverted. Please note the seat belt there was no panic. The plane Place was flying normally, and there was no position. sign of smoke in the cabin. Swiss Air 111, the localizer frequency is 109 or decimal niner. You've got 30 miles to fly to the threshold. Uh, we're going to need more than 30 miles. But still Please at more than 20,000 feet, the back beam? Swiss Air 111 Swiss Air was too high Roger, to make a landing in just 30 up, uh, miles. The frequency is a 109er niner decimal niner for the localizer. Okay, Roger, 109er niner point niner. And uh, we are turning left, heading uh, north, Swiss Air 111 heavy. And we've got to dump fuel. Agreed. So far, communications from Swiss Air have been calm. Still, Mountain Center initiated emergency efforts at Halifax Airport. Preparing ground crews for an emergency, Pickerel sought information from the pilots. Souls on board and your fuel on board, please, for emergency services. Roger. At this time, fuel on board is two, three, zero tons. We have to dump some fuel. May we do that in this area during descent? Pickerel was surprised to learn so late that Swiss Air 111 needed to dump fuel. At that point, it became more of a complicated situation. In fact, with every transmission after that, it became more and more complicated. Pickerel considered his options for a safe place that wouldn't take the aircraft too far from Halifax. He decided to direct the plane over St. Margaret's Bay, about 30 miles from the airport. The other choice, uh, if he had said he needed to stay close, was to uh, start the aircraft in a, a, a right-hand turn to uh, set him up for any of the other runways. I had to keep him flying in a, in a circle or a constant track so that he wouldn't fly back into his own fuel, which would have been uh, not good. Dumping fuel is standard procedure. 
A fully fueled passenger jet is too heavy and could break up on landing. Are you able to take a but turn back to Love south? But co-pilot Love wondered if, given their situation, the they might uh, forgo the regulations. Stand by short. They want us to turn to the south. Should we just forget about dumping and just land? No, dump it. Okay, we are able for a left or right turn to the south in order to dump. I initiated the vector back toward St. Margaret's Bay to start him in that direction. It indicated to me that, again, uh, it wasn't uh, a critical situation on board, that in fact he did have time to be able to go back and uh, dump his fuel over the water. Swiss Air 111, uh, Roger. Turn left heading of uh, 200 degrees and advise me when you're ready to dump. It'll be about 10 miles before you're off the coast. We will still be within about 25 miles of the airport. Roger, we are turning left, 200. In that case, we are going to descend to only 10,000 feet in order to dump the fuel. Roger, maintain 10,000. I'll advise you when you're over the water. It will be very shortly. Roger. While Zimmerman continued with his checklist, Love accidentally transmitted to Bill Pickrell in Moncton. Are you in the emergency checklist for air conditioning smoke? Yes. Uh, Swiss Air 111, say again, please. Uh, sorry, that was not for you. Swiss Air 111 was asking internally. Okay. Airspeed is decreasing below 306. A level off speed here. Just fly the plane as you see that stuff on. Swiss Air 111, continue left heading 180. You'll be off the coast in about 15 miles. Left heading 180, roger. Swiss Air 111 and maintaining at 10,000 feet. Roger. Cabin bus off. Cabin bus off, Roger. The cabin bus switch knocked out all the lighting in the cabin. It was an indication for the passengers that something was wrong, but hardly alarming. Ladies and gentlemen, we have temporarily lost the lights in the cabin. Please remain calm. The crew will be coming around with flashlights to assist in landing. Again, Despite no a cockpit filled with smoke, there was still no trace in the passenger cabin. You will be staying within about uh, 35, 40 miles of the airport if you have to get back to the airport in a hurry. Okay, that's fine with us. Please tell us when we can start to dump the fuel. Suddenly, the aircraft sent out a warning that the smoke was a sign of a more serious problem. Autopilot disconnect! Copy that, autopilot disconnect! Swiss Air 111, the autopilot disconnected because the plane's computer sensed we erratic readings. In the next 90 seconds, 10, 000, those readings uh, went haywire. 11,000 and 9,000 feet! Swiss Air 111, you can block between 5,000 and 12,000 if you wish. One by one, the instruments failed. The calm in the cockpit dissolved. Copy that! We are clear between 12 and 5,000 feet! We are declaring emergency now, Swiss Air 111, at time 0124! Then the two pilots spoke simultaneously. Combined with other distractions in the control room, Pickle was unable to hear a critical transmission. Love's declaration that they must land dumping immediately. Fuel. We are dumping fuel now! We must land immediately! Swiss Air 111, just a couple more miles, I'll be right with you. Roger that! And we're declaring emergency now! Swiss Air 111! Missing this transmission is a moment Bill Pickrell relives today. I'm not sure that it's a feeling that you can adequately describe. I recall reviewing the events of that night a thousand times to determine if there was something additionally that I could have done or if there was uh, some mistake that I might have made or was there any way that I contributed to this. And eventually I was able to come to the point of realization that there wasn't anything that I could have done. Uh, that Everything that could have was done. Now there was nothing to do but wait. I'm just flying and nothing else. After declaring an emergency, the pilots of the Swiss Air 111 faced an inferno. All my screens are down. I'm flying on standby instruments. Maintaining 300! 
Southwest Air 111. You are cleared to commence your fuel dump on that track and advise me when your dump is complete. Soon after I gave him authorization to commence the fuel dump, um, there was no acknowledgement. Um, initially I wasn't concerned by that because I considered that he was probably doing the fuel dump, he was reviewing a checklist, he was busy doing things, and as per our training, we're told not to bother the pilots in those kinds of situations. Swiss Air 111 check, you are clear to start the fuel dump. Six minutes later, residents of Peggy's Cove heard a devastating explosion. No one knew what had happened to 229 people after six minutes of silence. It was probably one of the most helpless feelings that any individual can have, not being able to do anything but just sit and watch the target and hope that it would turn back toward the airport. And of course it didn't. <laughs> 